Students at Oregon State University have designed an experiment to see how coastal homes hold up to storm surge. Researchers aim to use the data to help improve upon the building codes used by coastal communities. And while the experiment was performed in August, the Outer Banks are showing a real-world example right now of the destructive power of the ocean. And joining us to share the details is coastal engineering professor Daniel Cox. Professor, we appreciate your time. Can you give us a little more of an overview about this experiment, how you set it up and the way that it works? Yeah, sure. We um, had done a study in Fort Myers Beach after Hurricane Ian, um, looking at the damage to the houses there. And so we decided to try to replicate that storm, the storm surge, the wave conditions and the types of houses that they had that were elevated on stilts. And so with this, you know, of course, we have deadly and destructive impacts of storm surge with land falling storms. But when we look at present time, at least what's happened over the course of this hurricane season and over the last several weeks, storms well offshore, we watched the Outer Banks take a beating. Is there any connection that you've been able to draw between your study and then just the energy that's been churned up in the ocean um, with with these systems over the last several weeks? Yeah, the 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 big thing for us is how powerful the waves are. Mm -hmm. um, they just have a tremendous uh, force and the force on the building, the uplift, and um, really the study now is what to do about it, um, how best to elevate the houses and where this goes in terms of uh, building standards and building codes. So with that, you know, with your study, obviously elevation plays a role uh, with the construction of the home and it changes the impacts of flooding. What about the piling foundation itself? Does terrain of the landscape change how elevation supports the builds? For example, you know, obviously we're talking barrier islands versus mainland coastal communities. Yeah, definitely. The um, the sand is shifting. You know, the, the erosion of the coastline is going to have a huge impact on how stable that house is going to be, especially on the Outer Banks. Um, you know, these are... Uh, I think a little bit of zoning issue, you know, how close you want to build mm -hmm. to the coast, but um, certainly in, in the Outer Banks are just uh, experiencing massive amounts of erosion. So we're, we're looking at the experiment here and obviously different levels of elevation. Did you change the way that you, I guess, structured the pilings of, of these homes and how they, you know, how deep they went based with that elevation on how they were able to withstand perhaps some of the erosion of the wave energy? The focus on these experiments were primarily on the structure itself, so okay. less about the erosion and a little bit more just on what the overall impact is of, the, of those waves and how much they kind of push up and, and knock over the buildings. And we certainly can see that, right? I mean, we watched, obviously, in the experiment, you can see here just the constant pressure, almost in slow motion, just beat these homes apart. Yeah, and, I, and I, I think that's one of the powers of the laboratory is we, we kind of see exactly what's going on, we put all the instruments inside. Um, when we go out into the field, all we really get is a before and after. Mm -hmm. uh, there is some ongoing work right now to try to put instruments on the buildings in Rodanthe and other places in North Carolina. Uh, you know, a lot of these buildings are abandoned, and so the idea is, you know, as unfortunate as the circumstances are, can we at least get some idea of what the what the forces were and then basically come up with better solutions for the infrastructure we've got on the coast? Of course. So has your team come up with any tangible solutions or, or suggested changes from this experiment that can be implemented maybe sooner rather than later? I think the main thing is validating how important it is to build to a higher standard. So the greenhouse wasn't impacted at all, didn't, didn't fall down at all, and that was built to the, to the more modern code, which is 500-year standard. So I think that's probably the biggest takeaway for us is um, trying to move to these newer uh, standards. Can you give an example of at least maybe some of the building codes? I mean, obviously, there is a building code, but what was maybe some of the key differences between the orange home and the green home that you'd seen in the experiment as far as how you built it? Yeah, exactly. So, it, you know, late 1960s, we started with the 100 year as the basis for um, flood risk. We've been adding, you could say, band-aids to it ever since, you know, trying to uh, inch up the buildings a little bit. But, you know, the, the new guidelines are just 
uh, you know, abandon the 100 year and let's go to the 500 year as the standard. So that was really the difference between the orange and the green building. Mm -hmm. One was built to the uh, lower elevations and then the second one was built to the higher ones. And when we see the types of conditions, either like in the Outer Banks or, um, you know, when the, the hurricanes that we were learning about before, um, this, you know, about three feet of elevation makes a huge difference in whether or not a building's even going to survive. Wow. Well, we appreciate your time coming on to Fox Weather, sharing more about this experiment. And, of course, it's going to be an ongoing conversation about how we shore up our homes and our property in these beautiful coastal communities. Professor Daniel Cox, thank you for joining us. Appreciate your time. Jane, thank you for having me.